we've all had those moments where a child races through their work a lot earlier than you anticipated, I'm going to share with you some of my favourite fast finisher or extension activities. I will usually give my pupils a speeding ticket. I've seen it done with really cool storage boxes, things like Noggle and Boggle, the little triangles with a maths fact on each side, the red area which is the ketchup section. Primed Publishing are actually offering you the opportunity to win one of these comprehension boxes for your classroom. You need to be in it to win it. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jane, otherwise known as Miss Ross, and here on my YouTube channel I make all kinds of different videos relating to my experiences as a teacher. Today's video is one that I get asked about quite a lot, and that is my favourite fast finisher activities to use in the classroom. No matter what age group your learners are, pupils are all very different and they work at different speeds. I think we've all had those moments where a child races through their work a lot earlier than you anticipated, and then you're left scrabbling trying to find something else for them to do and I think once you know your learners a lot better then it's much easier to anticipate how long they're going to spend on certain tasks but we definitely all have those times where we need a quick little filler activity so today I'm going to share with you some of my favourite fast finisher or extension activities a few helpful tips that I want to give you before I go into the actual list of activities you're probably going to want to have a look at your classroom space and think about where and how you're going to store these resources so that it's accessible for your pupils to access independently. I've seen it done with really cool storage boxes that I'm sure you can get online. I've seen it done with baskets, with sets of drawers. So it's going to depend on what you have and how you want to organise it. A really great way that I've seen that fast finisher activities incorporated into the classroom planning is through the use of visual timetables, which again is something I talk about in my videos quite a lot, but I just think this is a really great way to organise groups in your classroom and to make sure that pupils have lots of tasks and know what is expected of them. So if a pupil has finished their work, then they can refer to their group's task board and they know what their activity is for that day. I personally have used little laminated cards that I made up, which I stuck onto a display that I had in my classroom for a timetable, but I've also seen it done with big display pockets, which again, I'm sure you'll be able to get online just with a quick little Google search. It's just a very visual way of reminding pupils what they can do once they finish their work. Also, just as some general advice, based on my experience, I would say that ideally you want pick up and go resources that you're going to be able to use over and over again with a range of different stages. Consolidating previous learning, try and make sure that it is something that pupils can access independently with little help or something that they could maybe do in groups or pairs and also something that you're probably not going to have to mark because that is just adding on extra paperwork for you. I tried to make sure that it is something that will keep my pupils motivated and keep them engaged in their learning even though they are finished the main task I would like them to complete. I try to have a range of activities across the course of the week which take into account lots of different learning styles. Again, you know your pupils best. It definitely takes time to build up a bank of resources which you can use over the course of the week so don't worry if you just want to start off with a few different extension activities. Rome was not built in a day. It's also very much going to depend on what you have available to you in your school, whether you do have access to a set of classroom laptops or you know iPads for your classroom. How you work out your extension tasks is very much going to be based on your environment. The final thing that I would definitely say is key in running a successful extension task timetable during the week is making sure that you take the time to teach your pupils those routines. A really great time to teach some of these activities is at the start of the year where you're getting to know your class. Make sure you take that time to explain the different activities to your pupils so that they know what they are. If it is an extension game then take the time to teach those games to your pupils so that they know how to play them and they can access those independently. So now I'm just going to start listing through some of the extension activities that I use in my classroom. This is going to be a little bit of a whistle stop tour of some of my favourite things to use and if there's anything that you use that I don't mention then please feel free to comment down below because it's going to help everyone to have lots of ideas to use in their classrooms and hopefully will benefit our learners. And as usual I've got my phone here so that I don't forget anything. This first idea I actually got from one of my mentors during my NQT year and I have used it in my classroom ever since. Nine out of ten times when a pupil comes up to me to tell me that they've finished their work, I have a quick glance at it 
and I can tell that they brushed it. There might be silly mistakes, there might be spelling errors, they might have forgotten punctuation, they might not have taken their time so their handwriting might be messy and I like to make sure that I'm very picky about these things so when that happens I will usually give my pupils a speeding ticket. It encourages pupils to reflect on the piece of work that they've done and consider whether it is their best work and to go back and correct some of the mistakes that they've made. I like the fact that this shows pupils that being the first to finish your work isn't necessarily always a good thing. I've seen lots of different variations of the classroom speeding ticket so definitely just get online and have a search for it and you'll be able to find loads of different templates. So yeah that is always a really good thing to turn to especially if a pupil finishes their work ridiculously quickly to give you a little bit of thinking time to figure out what they're going to be doing next. The second thing on my list was something that was suggested by quite a lot of teachers when I put up a little questions poll on my Instagram and that is to use challenge cards. Your challenge cards can be really Related to the main task that they've been doing and that will really encourage deeper learning. It's kind of in the name they will provide some additional challenge for your learners, especially for the ones that are really getting a topic. Now, in a lot of schools that I've worked in, we actually were lucky to have big boxes of pre-made challenge cards, which were from Prime Ed Publishing. And I am so fortunate that in today's video, they have actually reached out to me and sent me one of their boxes of challenge cards. I'm gonna turn this around so that you can see it. Now, these challenge cards have different texts on them and comprehension questions that pupils can have a go at. There are 81 original fiction and non-fiction texts that cover a wide range of genres. I'm just going to open it up so that I can show you. They are colour coded, so this section there are questions on determining importance. This one's actually about Quidditch. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. There is an activity book with lots of different photocopyable activities and there's also an extensive teacher guide in there as well which will help you out. Now you might have seen from the title of this video I am really excited that Prime Ed Publishing are actually offering you the opportunity to win one of these comprehension boxes for your classroom. This competition is only running for a short period of time and it will finish on the 5th of September so make sure you get your entries in to be in with a chance of winning one of these amazing comprehension boxes. Boxes. This is definitely a go-to fast finisher activity that you can use in your classroom so you need to be in it to win it. I'll make sure to link you to their Instagram in the description box so go and check out their page for more information about the competition. Alternatively you can follow me on my Instagram I will be posting on my stories about how to enter but yeah I thought I would let you know about that for today's video because I felt like that was quite relevant. My next type of fast finisher activity encourages pupils to reflect on the learning that they've just done. As teachers we are constantly assessing and evaluating people progress and it's really important to encourage them to self-assess their own work. I know a lot of teachers that use little exit slips at the end of their lesson as a plenary which encourages pupils to think about the learning that they've done and consider what their next steps will be. I think this is a really important skill for pupils to develop so if a pupil is finished their work early then you can give them a meaningful evaluation task to do and again there are so many different ways of doing this. I've seen it done with emojis where a pupil chooses an emoji to sum up the lesson and writes a little comment to explain why they've chosen that emoji. Some classes actually have a kind of evaluation station which I think looks really cool. Something that has been really effective in my classroom is using ketchup and mustard. I've seen this done a few different ways. Basically once pupils have finished their work their first port of call is the red area which is the ketchup section and that is for any work that they are falling behind on that they need to catch up on. On occasion I have actually just stuck a display up on my board and let listed the different things that pupils need to make sure they are caught up on. Then you've got the yellow section or the mustard section which I will usually list things that must be done before pupils can have free choice time. If pupils have completed all of the tasks in the ketchup and the mustard section then they can choose something from the pickle section which is usually more light-hearted and fun activities because they have managed to complete all of their work. And I just thought that was a really great way of organizing it, a really visual and fun way for pupils to remember as well. My next type of fast finisher activity is consolidation work. This is a really great opportunity for pupils to go over things that they've already learned and revisit areas that they've maybe been learning about during that term. Some examples of things that I have used that have been really effective in my class are things like number of the day. I had a number of the day display on my class. I would write a number on my board for each day and once pupils had completed their maths work then there would be a range of different tasks for them to complete around the number of the day. So for example if the number of the 
day was 12, then I would ask pupils to half that number, to multiply that number by 10, to find the next three even numbers. There are actually templates available for this on Twinkle, and I think there are also websites as well that generate numbers of the day that you can use as well. Countdown is always a good one to use, where you give pupils a target number and a group of smaller numbers, and they have to use their knowledge of maths and the four operations in order to try and get as close as they can to that target number. Another common one that I've seen used are multiplication wheels. So it's just a way of encouraging pupils to practice their times tables. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Big Maths Beat That, but that is quite a big scheme that we use in our schools. And they have something called Learn It's, where pupils basically have a time limit to try and write down as many answers to multiplication facts as they can. And my pupils really enjoyed doing that as an extension task. I'd quite often give them like a little sand timer and they could go away and practice writing out the answers as quickly as they could. I know that a lot of the teacher resource sites have little maths activity booklets which could be filled out as a little extension activity. Something that I have used that has been a hit with every class since I was at university is coloringsquared.com and they create maths colour by numbers for the four operations and there's some really good ones like Avengers themed ones, Minecraft themed ones, you name it, they have it and I love using that, especially like at holidays for seasonal activities, um, and my pupils really enjoy it too. A little bit of colouring in, but it's also educational as well. I feel like that was quite a lot of maths consolidation activities, but when it comes to literacy, you know, you could be doing some active spelling. If you've not already heard of Vocabulary Ninja, then they have a lot of amazing free resources to help pupils to expand their vocabulary and explore different words. Another type of fast finisher activity that you could use in your classroom are things like puzzles. These things can be used over and over again. I quite often have things like maths jigsaws. I can't remember the name of them, but the little triangles with a maths fact on each side and when they all join together, they make a pyramid. Things like noggle and boggle, which are little number and literacy puzzles that could fill a few minutes. I quite often use things like crosswords and word ladders that you would maybe find in a newspaper. And again, all of the teacher resource sites have so many different things like maths and literacy code breakers that pupils can do. Now I touched on this one earlier, it's going to very much depend on what you have access to in your school, but we all know how motivated pupils are by digital technology, so if you do have access to iPads or computers, laptops, it, then that is always a really good one to make use of for one of your fast finisher activities. It could be that you're asking pupils to make a short PowerPoint based on something that they've learned about, they could be doing some research, they could be doing a game which is related to what they've been learning about. I feel like there are so many different resources that I want to recommend but honestly it would be here all day. I'm, I feel like I'm gonna regret saying this one but generally I try to keep my extension activities quite calm because most of the time when a pupil moves on to an extension activity then there will still be quite a lot of pupils that are trying to get on with their main task. So I do generally try to avoid things like board games but they can be a really great motivator um, to encourage your pupils to try and get through their main task. Things like multiplication Jenga, there are a lot of different ways of converting traditional games into educational versions. Things like Connect Four, I have done spelling battleships. If you've not heard of Kaboom, then definitely go and check that out. Even just things like Snakes and Ladders, but adding an educational element to it where pupils need to answer a question depending on which square they land on. I have a great big ring binder full of lots of different dice games and actually something that I'm seeing a lot lately on teacher Instagram are people using fidget toys and poppets and incorporating them into games which seem to be a huge hit with pupils and something that I'm really keen to try and incorporate into my extension activities. I always try to encourage pupils that are finished their work to read for pleasure. I know that some teachers will have a free writing day of the week where if pupils are finished their work then they can do a piece of writing on anything that they want. It could be a song, it could be a poem, it could be a story, just to encourage pupils to find their love for writing and using their imagination. The next type of fast finisher activity is something that I often forget about, and that is classroom jobs. Things like sharpening pencils, logging into laptops, these things do take up time. It could even be just helping to start tidying up, helping you get set up for the next lesson. It is really good to have a little helper on hand, 
especially when you're nearing a transition period from one lesson into the next. And that kind of links to my next fast finisher activity and that is to encourage pupils to become geniuses. A little bit like the Apple store when you know you're needing help with one of your Apple products. I quite often encourage pupils that are feeling really confident with their work to go around and help other pupils that may be struggling with the area. A lot of teachers give pupils lanyards which I think is a really great idea. Something that I absolutely loved when I was a pupil in primary school and that I remember really significantly. I don't know if it was just my school that used those or not but we had like basically a spare blank jotter where if we were finished our work we could doodle in, we could play games in it, we could literally use it for whatever we wanted. I used to write stories in it because I wanted to be a writer when I was a child so it is nice for pupils to have their own little space to use for whatever they want to use it for. Mindfulness colouring is always a really nice one and actually in recent years I've found a lot of kind of emoji mindfulness colouring, Minecraft mindfulness colouring, Among Us mindfulness colouring. There are so many different resources available online. It is really good to tap into the types of things that your pupils are interested in because that is going to really motivate them um, and colouring is a nice calm activity that a lot of pupils enjoy doing so um, I definitely recommend having lots of different colouring sheets available on hand. And then the final one that I've put on this list is play. It's really nice for pupils to have chances to explore and innovate and play with their friends. Things like building Lego, giving them a little bit of free choice and a little bit of a say in their own learning is really going to motivate them and they really enjoy it as well. Anyway, I did tell you that was going to be a really quick whistle stop tour of some of my favourite types of activities to use as fast finishers in the classroom. I know I was quite vague about some of the different areas. If there's anything you would like me to expand on in a little bit more detail, eh, then please comment down below or make sure you go and follow me on my Instagram. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more teaching related content. I would love to have you stick around. I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in my next one. Bye!